Hi, I'm Christine. Thanks for joining me. Today we are looking at the colors over the years of the very much requested and very beautiful Rihanna. We'll be talking clothes, hair, and makeup because color that works is color that works. Doesn't matter where you add it, your color wardrobe is the same for all parts of your appearance. We'll be looking at red carpet styles. We'll be looking at street styles because the more ways you can see a person wearing colors, the better the decisions that you can make about them. But we'll be thinking about her as Rihanna from our world, not Rihanna on the stage, a woman walking into our Christmas party, not Rihanna walking into the Met Gala. She's a woman who wants from appearance what we all want, to be seen, to be heard, to be hired, to be asked out, to be taken seriously, to be listened to, without having to reinvent and remake themselves into less than or more than versions or a little bit of both, just to be accepted as who we actually are. And we'll finish with a few of my favorite colors. Early Rihanna, uh, 2005 here. So starting at the head, just taking a minute to learn this new person, get the sense of their color relationships. Beautiful, beautiful skin tone. Uh, nothing extreme in the transitions. You can go from skin to hair, to brows, to eyes, to lips without a big jumps or big transitions. Beautiful top and vest. Easy to look at under the face. Good to practice. Look at two things at the same time. Be equally aware of both of them and think about how you feel about that. The vest is plenty jeweled enough, but the variations of colors are pretty without being disco. It helps a lot that the background of the vest and the top are a soft beige. It's very peaceful looking next to the skin. Creates enough contrast with the skin without being too sudden or sharp looking. Then you come to the pants. Um, Oh, white is just too much. Even this far from the face, the white is bright and cool from the woman. It's the thing you can't stop seeing. It's not part of the body and the outfit. It, it steps apart like she's here and her pants are there. It separates the top and bottom halves from the body. I could describe it that way. In fact, they do look a little disco. They don't have the sophistication of the rest of the look. Maybe for a resort, you might see these, but you would see eight pairs of these jeans show up for the midnight buffet. There's nothing uniquely or beautiful, beautifully Rihanna about them. Uh, again, beautiful skin tones. The hair is dark. It's not especially intense or bright. I mean, that hair is not ink. It's beautiful with the eyebrows. The eye colors appear warm. Again, similar darkness to skin, hair, brows. The eyes appear to have more green in them, though. It's a very lively face, a lot of rapid change of shape. The bows of the lips, the nose probably comes to a point. It looks a bit upturned, eyes the same. You go from a round shape to a point very quickly, like a sideways teardrop goes from a circle right down to a point. Beautiful necklace against her skin, warm and pretty, not brassy looking. Earrings are a nice gold too. A rich old gold, like from a vintage shop, if they were light and bright, you would see the earrings, not the woman. Here they look like they're just part of this color picture. I bet nobody else in the room was wearing this color. It's a beautiful color. It's a really nice choice for her. It's plenty green enough. She does not need more color pigment under the face. But I can see the woman and the dress at the same time. It's not an either or situation. I don't feel any tension about Pick one, you can't look at the two together. No sense of too much or not enough. Also appreciate that it's a natural warm shade of green, not a super bright. A plant could be this color. You would see it in a natural landscape. Great choice of color to be visible and elegant in photographs because sometimes, well, it may be especially with celebrities, but possibly any party you've ever been to, sometimes the brightness is just too much for the person wearing it. I mean, they could have a sparkler in each hand and it just, it wouldn't stand out. It would, it just fit into this too much picture of what they're wearing. Good level of shine, no sharp white areas. I'm not sure that this is the best waistline or textile from the waist down. It seems a little floppy. But uh, yeah, it's not my area of expertise. So we will let the line and style analysts weigh in on that. Close up, still good. Good hair color. As light as she would go before the hair and the skin start to become too close in color and then you can't tell them apart. The eyes are about the same color as the hair and that looks great. 
super choice of highlight. It's not too red, it's not too blonde, it's not too far apart from the base color. And that works really well for her. It's very impressive restraint in this hair color. Nude lip, maybe a natural pink gray color with a warm golden shimmer gloss over top. I would have liked to see a little more warmth and color in the lip, that would be good. Earrings, again, a very good choice of metal. Between gold and silver, and so the teeth are nice and white, the metal repeats the tones in the hair, so they belong in this picture. They're medium shiny, that satin finish that looks expensive for her, it's not taking over. I have a feeling if we see too much shine, well, it'll get too much pretty quick. You can move your eyes from the woman to the dress and back again, and the experience is very smooth. So the overall impression is you're looking at one complete person who looks like she knows what she's doing. The bracelet, excellent metal again. She's uncommonly good at choosing these. No extremes of intense yellow or very red or uh, a very green brassy metal. It's just a soft golden shine. The mixed metals work really well for her. They have that kind of animation inside her world that balances her nicely. Really nice rose gold. Feels like pink sand and it looks real and natural. It doesn't look artificial. This is exactly the opposite of the previous one. The last one is better in every possible way. This green is so blue and bright that the richness of the skin tones are gray. So there's like a gray layer over the face. Just a sense of very much too light foundation. And then the hair is too ink and dark and it is too cool, meaning it's so black it's blue. And so that also drains the skin of its warm tones and health and compounds this feeling of a gray cast. The lips balance the hair, balance the dress. They're all reasonable together, but they're apart from the face. It's like a pe the lips are like a piece of plastic you could peel off. The, um, the last woman gave a sense of being whole and complete. This one gives a sense of being in parts that got glued together. First I thought powdery, but it's not powdery. It's acidic. It's just too citrus. Too, too sharply lemon lime. It's too bright. The woman looks dark and small. You, you can't distinguish her features. There's a sense of shadows, but you can't tell the shapes. Even the dark hair can barely balance the dress, but at least I can see shapes in the hair. I cannot really make out shapes in the face. Rihanna's playful and she tries all sorts of looks very successfully. I just don't know that Bo Peep styling is quite right. She looks like a doll. Um, she looks more like a child than a strong, competent adult woman. Maybe the intention here was humor rather than glamour, but Rihanna's got some height. Like I think Rihanna's 5'7 or 5'8. That's a lot of cool yellow green. On a person, what's really interesting is that on a person of the same coolness and brightness as that yellow, this would just look like a light yellow dress. You wouldn't have that feeling of it being acidic or apart or too much. It would just be a nice light yellow. This is a close up, surprising to see the woman wearing that dress. You know, if you met her after the event, event and you think, oh wow, I have no idea what you looked like. Uh, beautiful eyeshadows and blush. Again, the, the pieces that got glued together. So the eyeshadows and the blush are good together. Uh, silver and gold and jewelry, those are both good, even together, because there's enough animation in the face to balance the rhythm. The silver doesn't look frozen and the gold doesn't look too hot next to the skin, so that's good. The hair's dark, it's a black brown, probably too pigmented for the skin and the eyebrows because it looks a bit like a wig, but on a young person, um, it's manageable. Maybe if we had Rihanna at 50 or older, it would start being too obviously dyed, but this is okay. The lip color, it's a nice cool fuchsia, beautiful with the dress, but there's no harmony with the eyeshadows. You would not wear a shimmery toffee colored top with cool fuchsia pants or anywhere together in an outfit. It would just be a little bit odd. And for her, if I had to choose, I prefer the eyeshadow colors. The color is not clashing with the skin, but it looks weak. It's lacking in warmth or darkness or both. The overall effect, this really is powdery. Less pink in the beige, more gold, more cinnamon. I think that would be good. It's also overall very light. And if we could add something dark or make the whole dress darker, that would be better. Uh, 
the the style's getting in the way here the dress looks fussy and frilly those swirly shapes now they're kind of nice they're like a twisted teardrop and they go wide to narrow to wide really quickly well her the shapes in her face seem to do that too but the position of the ruffles you find the dress a bit bottom heavy i'm i'm not sure she needs that weight down at the bottom uh, but overall, color, I try. I try to stick to color. I really do. But other things come into my mind. All the, um, the effect is so much of the same thing that it's kind of monotone. It's dull next to her. And it's going to look duller with the colors that she's chosen in hair and in makeup. An improvement. Better head-to-toe darkness than the previous. I uh, don't have a particular need to add anything or break it up. I think the fact that it's just darker head to toe solidifies this picture better. Also, I notice when the color is better, I notice style less. Nice sheer dark areas, good movements and shapes and textures of the dress. Find her better in earthy color, rich wine. I would not prefer this in lollipop red. Even the blue and the pink in the wall behind her are a bit candy. It doesn't feel appealing next to her. The red in the dress, it might be a little intense, but she's wearing makeup to balance it. So this is an example of where you can use cosmetics to balance an item that might be a little bit too bright, particularly for an evening event. The curls have great movement, similar to her facial shapes in a way. The earrings are great. She's very good at picking metals. Soft golden light stones. Yeah, the hair's intense, sure, but her fabulousness comes through. You find yourself I find myself thinking, well, yeah, of course you're a superstar. That, that'd be the kind of hair you would have. And in the real world, I would meet her and think, okay, you're a young person going through a phase, as young people should and do, and there would be lots worse choices of hair color. And here's one now. You don't know where to look. This is awkward. The woman appears unhealthy. She appears older. The black looks like a shape that's been added to the image. You know, like when you try hair colors on online, and you put it over, and then you try them, and, and then you put it on. It's like separate from the body. The, uh, the face does not balance black. There's nothing in there to be able to meet that color. The eyeliner, maybe. The hair roots, maybe. But neither are hers. So, so what? It's not a good look overall. There's no consideration of the woman who's wearing any of this. Again, so much detail in the face, the swoops, the curves, and this minimal use of extreme color and absence of any curves is changing the face so that it looks overly detailed, lost in detail, confusing. You have no idea what's going on with this person. The blonde is too yellow. You cannot visually separate the face from the hair. The teeth are being yellowed. The blush is brown, muddy rather than healthy. Maybe the same color she normally wears too, but next to the blonde, it looks like it's too orange, it's too hot. The sculpture in the face, the ins, the outs, the drama in the agility of her face, it's all gone. And there's nothing you could do with makeup in this situation to make the hair or the dress work. It's like, is this would be just a case of start again. The idea of warm red is good. The warmth agrees with her. She does not look frozen the way she did in the shiny emerald green satin, but uh, the red's a bit too bright. It's a fruit punch and wine or salsa might be easier for the dress to go back and the woman to come forward. Same thing with the lips. We're more aware of lips and eyeliner and the dress than the woman who appears like a vague presence a little bit behind all of this. She seems small as well. I'm starting to think that single color is not as interesting for her as breaking up the colors. Within her color family, the activity, the agility would look less like a wall and more like a beautiful painting. The hair though, the hair is good. Warm brown without being too bright. It's not obviously dye. If you're a soft autumn, which is one of the 12 groups of natural coloring. If that's your group, not saying she is, I don't know, I can't tell from pictures, Get the, follow the link and get this hair picture. It's very, very good. This is a soft, warm brown base. The highlights are moving between dark wheat and soft copper. The root darkness has been preserved to frame the face. Just go from the hair to the eyes and the hair to the See how good that is going back and forth? 
the hair balances the brows. The, the um, overall effect for me is effortless. I don't get a feeling of that hair color being forced. The eyeliner is heavy, it's forced. But the eyeshadow contour, that's really nice. It lets the eye be shaped as contour does. Adds to the skin tones in the face. Repeats some of the other makeup colors. The eye, the woman is enhanced without overwhelming her or her eyes with color or darkness or shine. The pink has plenty of color, plenty of pigment, plenty of color energy. On someone with brighter coloring, this might look faded, but we're not talking about them here. We're talking about Rihanna. <laughs> the, uh, the skin tones have lost some richness and some warmth. So the pink may be at the edge of coolness, the edge of brightness for her. I mean, you'd have to try a few. But boy, this is really barking up the right tree. Large area of smooth shine that can be challenging to look at, but it's not frosty. The color of the dress makes the shine be warm, not white. <laughs> this is like <laughs> the doll on top of uh, Nana's toilet paper roll, you know? Anybody remember the face on those dolls? No, but <laughs> we all know the dress, kind of macrame and it goes out. <laughs> Darker mocha rose we saw is uh, much better, more elegant. The gown looks more expensive. This is more of a costume. She has partially disappeared. The skirt is very pastel pink, maybe even brighter than that. It's like a sugary dessert pink. And then we have the bodice, the top part of the dress that is a very cool frosty pink and that the border is too sharp. I mean, even compare this face to the last one and the three-dimensional magic has flattened out. I, I like this. She looks modern, natural, young, healthy, happy, real. She looks fun. You know what she looks that you very seldom see in Rihanna or a lot of celebrities? She looks relaxed. She looks like golden, like a princess on a day off. Um, the top is light and as bright as we'd want under the face. Colored definitely does get in front of her. But she's gorgeous in blue and she may have warm and cool both in her coloring. Well, most people do. That's called a neutral season. Denim's a good texture for her. It's not very shiny and it has a natural strength that repeats some of the strength in her body. Much prefer this to fabrics that look limp, flimsy, floppy, you know, like the dress with the, the swoopy seashells. Lips, healthy, beautiful, soft, coral, great daytime color, great weekend color. Much prefer this to the nude gray pink lip that she sometimes wears. Little tiny bit of black in that necklace under her face. That's a nice choice. The triangle is also a nice choice because it goes from wide to narrow really quickly. Well, so does she. she. It's a nice metal. Nice metals in all those chains. And the pearls are a good soft white. Again, it's not a sheet of platinum. It's a soft white and a tiny little area makes her look more golden. And golden appears to kind of be the theme here. She looks really beautiful. She looks age appropriate. She looks like she's trying out some fun things, but they are good choices for her. It's like looking at right directly at a light pretty soon. And it doesn't take too long. You want to look away. If she's going to do smooth shine. I would say darker is probably better and less shiny, even dark colors, super shiny. It would look oily. What do we say about the color? Too light overall. The woman looks too dark for this amount of lightness under the face. There's nothing balancing her. The shine approaches white in so many places that it's becoming insistent, uh, strident. You, you really do want to look at something else. It's like those white jeans in the beginning and they weren't even shiny. Close up is a whole different experience. You have a sense of like, is this even the same person? Where did you come from? Beautiful lipstick, defines the lips from the skin. It's great with the blush. It gives presence to the lower half of the face. It does not get in front of the eyes. It's lovely with the skin tones because sometimes when I talk about lip color, I think that you're picturing really, really red. <laughs> that's, that's not what I mean. I mean like I want a color that could have happened on its own that looks like the real you. Puts a mouth on her face. This is where her great lip colors start as in this could be the least she could do. Eye makeup, it is excessive in darkness. 
because I am too aware of eyeliner and mascara, it is crowding and closing in the eyes. I cannot think of a time when you want eyes to look smaller or further back in the head. Puts, uh, you put a dark shape around anything, too dark for the shape, and it looks smaller. That's just a standard illusion. The contour eyeshadow is warm. It's bright for the skin and the eyes. It looks orange. I prefer contour when it's closer to a shadow color, meaning it's softer, meaning it's grayer, because that's what shadows are. Picture how this would look. She's sitting beside you or across the table from you. You would be very aware of how orange that eyeshadow is. It is brighter than her skin. I find contour shadows are, are softer than the skin. Uh, so here the contour has a new role. It's not really defining the eye area. It is acting as another color, an accent color. As a look on a beautiful young person, it's like with the red hair when she had on the jean top, there's a lot of worse choices. This has some continuity with her, but we become very aware of it. And it would look very warm next to the dress that we know she's wearing too. We saw a great contour uh, where was it? The image with the red dress where we saw the close-up of the excellent hair and I said if you're a soft autumn this would be a picture to hang on to. Now we're coming to what is quickly becoming my favorite part of these videos where I get to show you the ones that I thought were really good. Perfect, not necessarily. They don't need to be. They're just choices that I thought worked really well for her and I'm going to tell you why. This is from 2016. What's good? I can see her. I can see the real woman. There is nothing in the way. I don't feel like I have to negotiate some piece of apparel to get to the person or to understand the person. If I met her, I'd like her. I'd respect her opinions. If she can make decisions that are this good about herself, the hardest person of all, <laughs> then she probably could make pretty good decisions. I love the woolen scarf detail. It's warm, it's soft, it has these earthy tones. It definitely adds to this. It's beautiful under her face. The effect is high end. It is very adult. It does not look girly to me. She's not competing with her clothing and that is rare to see for celebrities or for regular people, I think. The boots at darkness, those belong in some other picture because the impression is of wet plastic. Well, wet pla plastic has no particular place with the woman or the dress. She has beautiful feature definition. You can really see the person. It's like a lens in perfect focus. We have seen over these videos how blurred the facial features, the facial structures can become when you're wearing colors that are not your own. And so here there's no blur at all. Rich warm eyes, good blush, good lips. Silver in the earrings, softer, darker. It's not the sheet of platinum. It does not look frozen. And a great choice to incorporate a warm red stone. Beautiful belonging choices in the hair, the highlights, the eyebrows. And so the grown-up steps forward. This shirt color is so good that she barely needs anything else and I barely have anything to say. It, uh, it defines the eyes. It repeats the tones in the hair defines the shapes of the face. I find that she she glows. I mean, it's almost supernatural, her beauty. I could look at this for hours and just find more and more and more beautiful things. Her facial bones are so delicate. She's in three dimensions. The hair's good. Sure, more lips would be good. Yeah, sure, cooler blush and foundation, that would be good too. But you register those and you keep on going because there's so much beauty to hold on to your eyes. The, the eye colors are great. I get supernatural, again, like a goddess. And yet she's so uncontrived at the same time. She just got dressed and went out the door. I liked this color because she is not drained in gray and she's not overheated in orange and she's not needing a whole lot of stuff to look this good. Great color just makes us look better. You wear makeup, you don't wear makeup. You color your hair, you don't color your hair. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. You just look better. It's a better beige than that ruffled dress with the swoopy seashells. It's less of a pink beige. I prefer this, it looks more solid and real. I don't have a sense of a drab neutral. I'm not ignoring it. It's kind of like an exciting neutral. Very present, the same as neutrals are or can be for everybody. Maybe she does look a little orange or it's makeup or she's warmer than the sweater, but you know, for a woman walking through an airport, that is not too shabby. Her hair is dark, 
without being intense. It's a little cooler than we've seen, but her coloring seems fine with it. This may be contributing to why she looks a bit orange as my cosmetics, but the dye, it's not too concentrated. It looks like it could be her hair, and that is fantastic. That warm eyebrows to cool hair, the relationship works. I find it looks interesting. It does not look strange. Once more, the feeling is of a woman who knows what she's doing. Rihanna appears to like to shake things up and in how she looks as well. Edgy styling might suit her, but edgy color when it is too dark, too bright, too modern, too synthetic, too plastic, too extreme in any way gets in front of her. If she tries to combine edgy color with conservative styling, the effect just doesn't ring true. And so if I were her friend, I would say, hey, Rihanna, what looks really good for you in colors and in shapes? Actually a little bit different. In colors, you look kind of good in soft and warm, antique kind of textures in metals, warm, earthy colors in clothing. They are gorgeous with your colors. But in shapes, you handle a little bit of animation, something more fashion forward, something more modern, something more synthetic really well within certain boundaries. So let me connect you with a really good line analyst and we can get your styles sorted out now that we know your colors. Because that's the order to do it in. Get the colors sorted first so that you can see the real shape of things. We've seen that over and over in these videos and then you get your style sorted out. I hope that you enjoyed this video about Rihanna. I know that I did and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.